Is JJ Reddick the next Steve Kerr? Hey, what do you think? Is JJ Reddick the next Steve Kerr? Or is he the next Steve Nash? Yeah, what is it? That's clearly the pathway right now. We talk about pathways for Luca, right? LeBron, the Steve MJ. Pathway. Yeah. The You're Steve, on the Steve line. Yeah, it's, it's, we're taking the Steve line now with JJ Ray. Obviously, he's given, been given the four year deal. I don't know how much money he was thrown his way. I don't think it's ever really been disclosed right now. I don't think, yeah, I haven't seen so a figure. Four years, obviously, to take the Lakers um, back into the playoffs. That's a goal. Final few seasons with LeBron, more likely than not. And then who knows what happens with the Lakers after that, right? But um, I think. I think I I like JJ Reddick. Yeah, let's be clear. Okay, I, like I think I've said this before. Yeah, he was a Magic player. I loved him when he was a Magic player, even before he broke out, and then he was you know became a rotational and, and key contributor for our team. I was really sad in the sense that he was traded and uh, got moved on. Um, I don't think he get traded or did he walk? I can't remember. All right, but you know, obviously he left. He got traded in Milwaukee. Yeah, and then and then obviously he left, and um, then obviously had a few great seasons with the uh, Lob City. Um, Clippers, obviously as a shooter, um, surrounding all those um, dunk threats with CP3, and um, and then obviously he sort of then faded out. I think from there, you know, in that sort of sense, um, it's funny because he was actually drafted after LeBron, and obviously he's he's he finished his career clearly before LeBron, and now he's coaching him now. Um, but I am skeptical whether he's going to move the needle, man, in the Laker land right now. Um, you know, I think I think there's a lot sort of heaped on him right now that's suggesting that he's going to be a highly successful coach. But from a wins perspective, um, you know, I, I think we're all sort of thinking they're just going to be again at that 500 at best sort of mark here, unless they make some crazy moves. I don't know. Do they land land Paul George and Trey Young? I don't know, man. <laughs> well, the biggest issue with the Lakers has always been the personnel, really. Like, ever since they won the championship, they... You know, that Westbrook trade really should be analyzed deeper um, as a trade that destroyed a team because they had Caruso and Kyle Kuzma and Contavious Caldwell Pope, you know, players who have had impact on other teams now, two of which, you know, for legitimate defensive purposes. So it was a really interesting trade that they did. Um, but also the way that they built their team as well, you know, picking up Dwight and Rajon Rondo, you know, savvy veterans, they don't build the Lakers like that anymore. Right. Like they've really put a lot of stock in those second round picks that they acquire. You know, like Huchafino is a name that I've heard way too many times for a guy that I don't think I've ever seen play basketball. So, you know, the way that the Lakers fan base has to cope with things is probably, a, you know, an interesting study in and of itself. I think Reddick will do a decent job. I think he's far more likely to have the Steve Nash path than he is the Steve Kerr path because he's not inheriting a budding dynasty that's ahead of the way that the game was played. I think that's what Steve Kerr really benefited from. He realized that the league was turning into more threes. He had the best shooting backcourt of all time, and he let them go before everyone else started to let their backcourts go. So I think Steve Nash is his path. I think it'll be interesting to see if he plays out the full four years. Obviously, Surely, if Reddick finishes four years of coaching with the Lakers, he's not still coaching LeBron by the end of it, and they have to have moved on. Um, I've seen a rumor that Anthony Davis might be packaged in a trade. I don't know why you would do that. Um, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> because, like, AD really is the successor, you know? I think not just for the franchise, but for them to have any chance of winning. Um, you know, and then it's also, like, it's another thing. What if the Lakers had finished better in their seeding and they never had to play Denver? And, you know, like, let's pretend that they got against the Dallas matchup or they got the Clippers matchup and they were able to roll through to the conference finals and they play a Minnesota team that's young and inexperienced and maybe, you know, they're in the finals and everything's different. Sure. I think for the Lakers, JJ Reddick doesn't do enough to alter your luck. I think other things need to happen, like LeBron being 40 or 41 and um, not getting injured and being great and Anthony Davis having another healthy career year. I think when you start saying that stuff out loud, you realize there's no chance that they win a championship. I, I think <laughs> it's, 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 it'll be interesting who they put the as sort of assistant coaches around Redick and who he sort of talk uh, decides to bring in as part of his staff. Uh, one of the funny names is being flown around is Stan Van Gundy. Um, that would be a real full circle sort of situation to bring Stan Van Gundy as an assistant coach under JJ Redick in Lakerland, man. That's just um, that's just funny shit and, and good on him, right? But uh, but look, you know, I think at the end of the day, it's it's a huge learning curve. I think you're probably right that it's more Steve Nash like. 
I'll, I'd love to see him succeed. Don't get me wrong. I'd love to see him as a head coach for the next 10, 20 years, you know, as, as long as he wants to coach in that sort of sense, you know, until he's an old fella, right? But I think I think there's going to be a lot of challenges here, not including the fact that he's under Lakerland pressure in that sort of sense to succeed. And, you know, getting 30 wins is not going to cut it in Lakerland, man. You've got to at least get, get into the playoffs, I think, consistently. And even at that point, <laughs> if your team doesn't look that competitive, then you're already now on the chopping board. So um, I think... Um, I don't know, man. I, I don't know if he's going to see out his four-year contract. <laughs> I think I think that's the, the part, right? And, um, you know, I, I don't know right now. I'm going to bet against that he sees his four-year contract out. Maybe he gets two years in Lakerland. And and then maybe the part where, you know, he, you know, LeBron has to retire at some point, right? Isn't that the point? How long has he played for? Till he's 45? <laughs> I don't know, man. Maybe we'll play until Bryce plays, right? How many years <laughs> you still he maybe declares? <laughs> I don't know. It's like... But uh, look, I just I just don't necessarily think he's gonna pay out his contract. What uh, do you think he's gonna get? You know, get four years in in LA. Well, I think any coach getting the full contract length, like Monty Williams, has already gone out of his five or six year well, that's deal. What I was say. Well, that's the, that's the flip side, right? The luckiest man in the world is probably in the NBA right now. You got sixty million dollars or so owed to you, and you don't have to do shit. But I'm pretty sure he's also getting paid from Phoenix. Like the the way that these contracts are stipulated, you know, I like this is the thing. JJ Redick wants to give coaching a go. I can see him having a Luke Walton s sort of path, you know, where Luke Walton obviously gets an extended stint. He will need to have a lot more success than Luke Walton did. But you know, the way that JJ talks about the game, you know, his work ethic, everything that he's done, it sounds like he will be successful. Inheriting a team like this instead of maybe a young team that he could work with, uh, maybe that's problematic. There's definitely got to be an interesting dynamic with the fact that you're only a couple of months older than your best player who has the power legitimately to make or break your career. So, no, he's younger you know, than LeBron. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. sorry. That you're, yeah, so, uh, he's, so he's younger than LeBron, which, which is funny. So a whole lot have been made about his relationship with LeBron because they do that podcast <laughs> together and stuff like that. And obviously they... Um, you know, they've known each other in the league. They played against each other in that sort of sense. Um, and I don't know how much of that is relevant. Like, you know, just because you get along with your players from that perspective, like you have a friendship with them, a personal friendship with them, that's the reality here, is that come crunch time, it's designing schemes and making the decisions in game that are going to help you get that W. And, um, you know, uh, unless unless we're leading towards that LeBron just got to make those calls. <laughs> and JJ is, like, happy to go along with it, man. <laughs> like, you know, I think that's... Like, uh, I, don't know, right? I don't know. If, that, if that's the whole strategy, then sure. Right? But, but otherwise, I think LeBron is a real defined product of what you can and can't do. Yeah. And clearly, the Lakers, like you talked about, have not put the right pieces around him since that, you know, bubble rink if you want to call it. Um, and there was many other factors, including the fact why it's, a, you know, called the bubble ring in that sort of sense that um, that, that wouldn't, haven't really helped them succeed. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, I just, I don't think they're looking to make those moves or they can make those moves at this point um, to, to, to move the needle in that sense. I mean, the Lakers have done a good job of having them in a conversation when, it should have been about the Celtics winning the NBA championship or it should have been about, you know, OKC making a legitimate move. I think that's probably the big thing, really. You know, I think Lakers PR is is top notch and better than the average person's because, yeah, I, I, I this is one of those like, oh, cool moment. I don't really know what's going to change, but 